live berries, and then some nano fish, and then I've got goldfish, shrimp and some African cichlids, West Africa and Australia on the next row, and then Asia and India on the next row. You think that using her would get to me? You're in trouble, me. Very territorial, be very neat. Let's go label something. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that Hey Bruce. guys, how's it going? Uh, Long good time no morning. see. We're here before the doors even open. This is the right time to get here. Hmm? Right? Bruce, I've known for a long time. I've been coming to Aquatech here in Austin for seven, eight years yeah, now. At least now you, eight, yeah. You, oh, I actually have shirts for the both of you. Yeah, because we're going to have <laughs> Evie. Now we didn't let her know, but you are Let's working today. <laughs> and this one's for you, Sean. Okay. Aquatech and blue ring octopus i love that so so i guess start in the fish area mm. the store is actually laid out geographically so this is the south american section both both sides yeah, tend to do the larger fish or the fish that get larger on this side and then smaller tetras and coris and things like that over here mm. God, how mm. tiny these rasboras yeah. are Wow! Little exclamation points or your ophthalmoides. Exclamation point radboras? Yes. It's because they're the only the point? Because <laughs> they have just a little point on the tips. <laughs> these are even smaller. These, these, are, these are the smallest African barb here, these barboides gracilis. Those are cool. They're dwarf amber barbs. And, they're uh, very tiny. Those are pretty much full grown too. That's full grown? Mm -hmm. For the person that likes the miniature dog, exactly. they can now have mm -hmm. the miniature fish. And then goldfish, mm -hmm. koi, mm -hmm. more live bears, mollies, platies, guppies, sword tails. Look at your scape here. Wow, you got the cantilever. So yeah, that that, that was a lot of gluing work. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of shrimp. Yeah, if there's a color of shrimp, I. I want it. <laughs> kind of something that, you know, you have to do as an aquarium store. You really need to understand and kind of have your finger on the pulse of what's popular, what's trending. What is going on with this fish here? I don't think I've ever even seen that. This one over here, look what's going on uh, with this A hump head. head glass fish. It's a it? hump head glass fish? And they get pretty big, you know, roughly five inches. Mm -hmm. I've never seen that. It looks like kind of someone accidentally squeezed his head too hard. <laughs> and then we have Australia, and then a bunch of little gobies and things that go there. Here's your snail section. This must be one of your most popular sections, is the snail. Shrimp and snails. And truly, I feel like over the next three to five years, you'll see snails taking over the aquatic industry. Just keep your eye on that. Snails, invest in them now. So if you were gonna, it looks like most of the shop dedicated to the freshwater buyer? Freshwater um, is definitely our largest part. I'd say we're probably 80% freshwater, 20% saltwater. Right. Yeah. Well, that's kind of the breakdown of the industry. There's nine freshwater aquariums for, a, a, for every, every saltwater yeah, aquarium. Exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. And so when we do the Aquashella show, we, you know, we kind of have a mixture of both, but you know, to see it being 40% saltwater consumers at when that's not really the layout of the... It's not really the layout of the industry <laughs> as a whole. It's kind, of, mm. it's kind of surprising. It seems saltwater people like to go to more conventions, right? So... You've got corals on this side here. Mm -hmm. Very These awesome. These guys just came in yesterday. I've got a local clown breeder. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love it when they're in little balls. When, when they are balls. little balls, yeah. <laughs> These guys hang out in the group, and these are the trailblazers over here, uh, letting people know it's okay to wander off past the group. I think they got a mantis shrimp, uh, harlequin shrimp, peppermint shrimp, axolotls. I got some great big uh, wild type. And then I've got these little guys are also a local breeder. Wow, and a dinosaur. And Look. dinosaur. <laughs> I'll give a piece of advice to people wanting to do this effect uh, in their aquariums. Don't buy the cheap one off Amazon because we did that for our spooky oxalotl build. We just grabbed one um, because it was kind of a last second idea and uh, I put it there and it they, started to shock. It started to go <laughs> that and, and those, those cheap ones, they, they last for 
maybe a week or two. Yeah. I've been running these two in this tank for I don't know, almost a year now. This thing is so cool. I like to see kind of evolutions in aquarium building because it makes it so much more cool. And I think that this is kind of a real eye catcher. Um, makes it easy to work on the aquarium. Um, real showpiece, so I like that. Big shout out to UNS for making such a cool aquarium. Um, keep doing it, and I want a larger one. If you can get me a larger one, like 36, 48 inches, that would be preferred. You can even send it to me before you send it to everyone else. Make sure I let everybody know about it. Dropping a hint, you don't have to send it to me, but I really would like you to. We've got the lay of the land. I will walk the tanks, check to make sure everything looks good, and I'll report back to you, Bruce, okay? All right. All right. Very important to check behind all the sponge filters. Yeah. Are these, these are a type of spangle? Is Those are a red root floater. Hmm? Red root floater, okay. I am super rusty on fresh. I, I stopped doing fresh when I was like, I don't know, 13 or 14. So, okay, so I wanna talk about your bulk botanicals here because I am not familiar with everything because I've actually been out of the freshwater side for many years. You've got a lot of different textures here. Is a lot, um, a lot of variety good? Do you want to steer clear of some? So I like together? to have a lot of different things in the tank because when you, when you look at a natural stream system, right, you think about the debris you're not falling. going to see just a, a field of one leaf mm -hmm. or one pod or one type of bark. It's always going to be stuff that's washed in, stuff that's coming down. So I do a lot of different botanicals when I use them. Oh yeah, the, the lotus pods? Lotus pods. Yeah. And, and they break down ridiculously quickly, but... Do they, they release look, a lot of tannins? They release a lot of tannins. Nowhere near as many tannins as these little monkey pots do. That's cool. <laughs> and these are used a lot in the uh, frog industry, okay. and they actually use these as little little water dishes. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Which is, which is cool, but they, Nature's they water bowl. make just a ton of tannins. Okay. You know, almond almond leaf. leaves, everybody uses those, and chola branches. Bale pods. So uh, is that... That is just white naturally, or so, do they treat this? So they they, uh, they bleach these to, to take off some of the uh, contaminants, okay. and, and then as these waterlog, they turn brown, black. Mm -hmm. okay. So what is something that you would have that would last a while in there and not break down quite so fast if someone's kind of wanting to throw something so in and not worry about it? The harder materials, you know, when you when you're looking at lotus, mm -hmm. okay, nice and soft doesn't last a long time right versus these para pods you know they're a, they're a oh. crunchy thing so they, they it looks they like part of a coffee forever. bean a lot like a coffee bean and then these ones they call pear pods because well they look like a pear okay <laughs> I like to have a wide selection to choose from because mm -hmm. I don't I don't want to have just almond leaves or just Catapa bark or something like right. that. I, I wanna, I wanna have fun with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. We are doing a normal thing for a fish store. <laughs> Jimmy, come up here. <laughs> Stop it, Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy, we are headed to pick up a shipment of fish. Okay. All right. We got, got a nice and safe great and sound. Shipment ready to go. A fine quality marine shipment. We'll throw out a little plug to them. <laughs> Cardinals. Oh, a firefish. Another firefish. Bicolor dotty back. We were talking about dotty backs yesterday at Austin Aquadem. Very territorial, could be very mean. One per tank generally is a rule of thumb with dotty backs. So, Jimmy, this is a, a diamond watchman, Gubby. Okay. So he's a sand sifter goby. So what we'll do is we'll put him in a tank that has sand because he sifts sand through his gills uh, for food. He sifts it for food. So any leftover fish that lands in the sand, he'll grab the whole clump of sand, 
sift the sand through his gills. It's really cool to watch. A firefish, right? So they can go in groups. You can have like a dozen in your aquarium. Let's just do one here and then one over here. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is a blueberry gorgonian. Pretty delicate. That's why they're hanging upside down so they don't get air. But these have these like blue, blue polyps. They're really cool. I know, it's like there's a, a orbit. Bat. Bat. The flame can go in there too. Mm -hmm. All right, so the plants are over on that side. Yes. Ah. Uh, I know I want to do a java fern. This guy right here? A java fern fishtail? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that would be perfect. This is going to be on the house from me. Oh, well, thank you. I don't know if they sell it here, but. Bruce, you can bill my account if you have to. Can I get a moss ball? You can, yes. I will approve of you getting a moss ball. You have to have a specialized tank for shrimpy. Do you have shrimps now? I do not. Oh, okay. There you go. Three green moss balls. Bruce, unless you want me to ring out your customers. Excellent. Thank you. Your Aquatech Fish Club saves you $17.60 a day. Waiting for Kern. Oh, is that your dog? Yeah. That is your dog? Yeah. Look, Jimmy. Well, I'm not going to get the dog. card number. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, no. Cut that out. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Until next time. All right. Bye. Thank you. Let's go label some fish. Newspaper. If y'all did not know, you, you can easily use newspaper to clean this up before you start writing on it. Bruce uses the good paint pens that don't like smudge after you've written everything. So who have we got? We've got Bengai Cardinals and a Flame Angel? Yeah. Wow, I want to buy it already. Right? Such good handwriting. So this is who all's in this bucket? They're all up here in these bags. So I can just kind of go through here. We're gonna label everybody. Ouch. So those went up. Those are 60. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, wow. Uh, another Another plenty. 60. Mm -hmm. okay. And your Diamond Watchman? 45. Yeah. We're done. We're rocking. Best teamwork ever. Thank you so much, Bruce, for having us out here today. And thank you guys for coming by. It was lots of fun. It was a pleasure having everybody here, and I hope you liked the place. All right, Fritz fam, we hope you enjoyed your tour of Aquatech Tropical Fish. Go check out the Aquatech Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, wherever they may have social media. They're here in Austin, so just give them a quick search and follow them. Until then, snailed it.